alam namin what is HIV, pero we are not knowledgeable. Okay. okay? Unlike, unlike now, we're all knowledgeable about HIV. So that time, alam namin, once na magka-HIV ka, mamamatay ka na. HIV is death sentence for us. Yeah. Before. Hello at the back door fans. My name is Gab and I'm joined by Kuya Louie, an HIV advocate who for the last 10 years since he got diagnosed has been a case manager and a counselor and a person living with HIV. So the first reported case was of Dulcera Cortez in 1984. And since then, HIV has been like a sort of stigmatized virus here in the Philippines because it was connected to homosexuality. It was connected to, to drug addiction, things that are not openly spoken about and even until now are not. But we have people like Kuya Louie who's dedicating their lives into making other people's lives a little easier, especially those with HIV. So join us as we talk about his life and his experience and his advocacy with HIV. I'd like you all to welcome our guest for this episode, Louis. Welcome, Louis. Thanks for coming to At The Back Door. Now, you told me before we started, you prefer to be called Kuya Louis. Yes, Kuya Louis. Why? Ah, uh, by the way, hi, everyone. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kuya Louis, because, you know, as counselor, kailangan lagi, ko, lagi akong ma-motivate, laging may harang, kasi, you know, I'm gay. At the same time, lagi ako may kausap. Mahirap sa akin yung emotions. Kapag naririnig ko yung Kuya Louie, Kuya, sasabihin ko, oh, hindi pwede. I'm a counselor. Yeah. So that's why Kuya Louie, kahit anong edad niya. You're a counselor for an HIV clinic. Or better said, two HIV clinics. Correct? I'm working as HIV case manager. Case manager. In San Juan yeah. City Social Hygiene Clinic. In one clinic, I'm volunteer lang. Okay, yeah. So, nag volunteer ako as advocate para mas, mas malaki pa yung mabigyan natin ng um, awareness and prevention at the same time. So, you yourself have been diagnosed with HIV? Yes. When was this? 2013. Actually, going 10th year sa July. Is it something to celebrate or...? No, since I diagnosed, <laughs> lagi ako nagsa-celebrate yearly. Every anniversary ko, nagsa-celebrate ako. Oh, really? For, so, every year you celebrate yeah, your diagnosis? Me, it's my second life. So I need to celebrate. What, what, what do you mean, second life? Uh, since I diagnosed, for me, it's, it's, it's my second life. Kasi naniniwala ako na baka that time, mamamatay na talaga ako. But binigyan ako ni God ng second life. As advocate, mm -hmm. as human being, to do my mission. So I need to celebrate it. So your mission here is being then a counselor, a case manager yes, to helping other yet, people with HIV. Yes, and to give inspiration also. So it's like your awakening. Yeah. You see being diagnosed with HIV as as an awakening. Yeah, because for me, HIV is a gift. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna have to explain that a bit more. What, what do you mean? <laughs> like... Yeah, I understand. It's hard to, you know, to accept the fact that, well, I have HIV, right? Yeah. Pero for me, HIV is a gift because and daming realizations. I realized that ang sarap mabuhay. Second, I realized that na nabibigyan ko ng importance every little things na nangyayari sa life ko. Third, napapahalagahan ko yung family ko, yung love na binibigay nila. Mas nagiging close ako with my loved ones. What was your life before you got diagnosed? Happy go lucky person. Before, businessman, nakipag live in with someone, then yeah, sex, sex, sex. So you you contracted HIV through sexual intercourse, not Yes. Okay, yeah. Yes. Okay. With with one partner. Yeah. Kasi nagmahal lang ako. Mm -hmm. Kaya nagka-HIV ako. So you see Nagmahal, right? Does that mean you were aware that that partner, well, your partner then, was had HIV? Alam namin what is HIV. Of course, yeah. But hindi kami totally knowledgeable about that. Then that time, my living partner, Dario, his Uy, nickname. Can you say his name? No, it's, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Well, wala na naman siya. Nasa heaven na siya. Oh, okay. Well, rest in peace, Dario. <laughs> Alam namin what is HIV. But we are not knowledgeable. Okay. okay. Unlike, unlike now, we're all knowledgeable about HIV. So that time, alam namin, once na magka-HIV ka, mamamatay ka na. HIV is death sentence for us. Yeah. Before, as long as, you know, nagmamahalan kami, nagsa-sex kami, kami lang, so we're safe. Pero naging busy ako that time sa work ko. As a um, businessman, as road manager sa isang big TV network that time. Okay, wow. Six years, yung nag-live in na kami, medyo nawawala na yung sex. Mm -hmm. As in, more on companionship na lang. 
Pero aminado naman ako na first two years namin were sexually active talaga. And then, lagi namin pinag-aawayan yung switch role in regards sa sex. Kasi I'm inserter mm-hmm. sa sex. Siya yung receiver. And then, nakakalimutan ko na may need siya. Kailangan niya may pasukan in regards sa sex. It means, kailangan niyang maging inserter. Okay, so you switch that role. I can't. Oh, okay. Kasi yeah. sakit. Yeah. kaya. <laughs> but I've tried thrice. Yeah. Pero hindi ko kaya. Dumating sa point na ilang beses ko siyang nahuli in our apartment na may kasex siya na iba. But this was like an open thing, I assume. Or... I think for, for him. Pero not for me. Oh, okay. But yeah. still, because of my infinite love, pinatawad ko siya. Okay. I forgive him. Because I blame myself also. Kasi hindi ko kayang ibigay yung role na gusto niya. Alright. Yeah. In regards to sex. But the love was so strong so that kept you guys kind of together and then then you had this awakening. So you call it like a sort of second life, no? Like yeah. a, a new purpose to life. Yung na-diagnose ako, hindi ko naman siya sinise. Mm-hmm. Yung nahawahan niya ako, hindi ko siya sinise. Instead, mas minahal ko siya. Mas sinise ko yung sarili ko. Hindi ko kaya na mag-switch role. Hindi ko na ibigay yung, yung needs niya. Kaya naghanap siya na iba. But... I know na ako yung ako lang yung love niya. Secure ako doon. Pero in regards to sex, hindi ko kaya. Yeah, it was just like a not compatible in that sense yeah. kind of like. But the love was just so powerful. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so then you got diagnosed 10 years ago and then how was it for you the first time you got diagnosed? Like how did you feel? I mean, you were talking about that before you knew what HIV was, but you were not really totally familiar with. You would you thought it's a death sentence. You don't think like that anymore, I assume, right? Siya kasi unang na diagnosed. Mm-hmm. And then a month after, ako yung na-diagnose. Two emotions or two reactions yung naramdaman ko that time. First, masaya ako. I'm happy. Because mamamatay na ako. Okay. Kasi yung living partner ko, Dario, is mamamatay na din. So we can continue our you know relationship, our love. Mm-hmm. Saan man kami magpunta? Sa heaven man? Or kung saan man? Second emotion or reaction ko, parang every time na mag-isa lang ako, nalulungkot ako sa... Paano yung family ko? Ah, paano ko yung magagampanan yung yung role ko as anak, as son, dun sa family or sa parents ko? Paano ko sila tutulungan? So, mixed emotion that time. You have this love for your partner, but then you have this whole other life yes. next to you. So, you have to keep that into consideration. And before, wala pang mga awareness eh, about HIV. So, wala kaming idea na we can live pa ng matagal. Pwede pa namin ituloy yung buhay namin together. So, mm-hmm. hindi namin alam. So that's what you were going through, but at what point did you then start becoming a case manager? Like it says on your shirt, Kuya Louie, yeah. HIV case manager. Yeah, Kuya Louie. Zoom in on that. Eight months after my diagnosis, ni Dario, kinuwa siya ni Dan. So that fast? Yeah, that fast. Because Dario is late diagnosed. January 2013, I thought meron lang siyang heartburn. And then weekly, nahirapan siya, nagkaroon siya ng difficulty of breathing. And then lagi namin siya dinadala sa hospital. We, we thought leukemia. Yung sakit niya. Okay, yeah. The symptoms were maybe yeah. similar. But the last test na ginawa sa kanya is HIV test. The last test? Yeah, but, HIV test. But they fully knew that he was a homosexual man who is sexually active. Umamin siya sa akin that he is called boy before, sex worker siya before, bago kami nagkakilala. nagkakilala. Okay. May idea na ako, pero hindi ko inisip na may HIV siya. Every time magsa-sex naman kami, no, I am inserter. Second, uh, wala naman siyang ibang nararamdaman that time. Pero January, kasi full blown na. So late diagnosed, nasa condition na siya ng AIDS. So halos naging bedridden siya that time. Unlike me, early diagnosed ako. I need to undergo HIV testing because my partner, Dario, is bedridden and diagnosed with HIV in condition of AIDS. Uh, doon nagsimula yung pagiging advocate ko, yung processing na pinagdaanan namin together, yung nakikita ko siyang nahihirapan, pero wala akong magawa kundi tumalikot at umiyak and then nakita ko yung yung pain ng isang nanay or mother na nahihirapan na nakikita yung anak niya na nahihirapan din yung nawala si Dario or na, namatay siya sinabi ko na hindi ko sasayangin yung life na sinacrifice ni Dario at tutulong ako to give inspiration so and to give knowledge this was your like calling so calling once your your ex partner Dario passed this has to be something that has to be brought to the public i have to yes. guide and, these other people who are going through the same and, situation and mas na motivate ako kasi ayoko nang my mother na iiyak and ayoko nang may uh, maiiwanan 
ayoko na na may mamamatayan because wala silang knowledge about HIV. Of course. Yeah. That's why ito yung role ko as counselor na magbigay ng correct information about HIV para maiwasan. And so for the last nine years, this is what you've been doing. Yes. And how does it feel? Like, I mean, what do you come across? I mean, you know, you hear a few stories of people who do not want to go to clinics because they're scared that they're going to get diagnosed, the stigma behind it, and also, like you say, they might consider it to be a death sentence, right? And you come across these people. Yes. And uh, how would you guide them through that process with this, with their mindset already being like, shit, I have <laughs> HIV? Uh, sinishare ko yung experiences ko. We all know na iba-iba na may experiences ng tao. Yeah. And iba-iba din yung lifestyle. Sinasabi ko lang na, if it's slow, it takes time, and dito si Kuya Louie to guide you, ang kailangan mo lang gawin is trust, magtiwala, makinig, and sumunod. Three words. Every time I do counseling, trust o magtiwala, makinig, and sumunod. Kasi, minsan, inuuna yun, na, nauuna yung emotions. And understandable naman. Mm-hmm. And lagi ko sinasabi yung stigma and discrimination. We need to understand the people na walang knowledge. Kasi hindi ka naman discriminate Hindi ka discriminate or hindi ka ini-stigmatize. Dahil takot sila. Dahil yeah. wala lang silang alam. So yun yung lagi ko sinasabi sa mga kapwa ko person living with HIV na we need to understand the people na walang knowledge about HIV. Kami yung mag-a-adjust as person living with HIV because kami yung knowledgeable. And then, sinasabi ko sa kanila na you have the rights na hindi sabihin yung status mo for the meantime. Ang important... Is that a thing? Yeah. You don't have to tell? Yes. Even if you're going to be sexually active with someone else, you don't have to tell them that you have HIV? Yes. You have the right. How does that work with like social responsibility kind of? If Sin- you don't tell somebody that you have HIV and you're about to like engage in... Mm-hmm. Lagi ko sinasabi na uh, you have the right na wag sabihin yung status mo but be responsible enough. Oh, okay. Yeah, make sure na you are protected while doing sex. Second, uh, if you have uh, HIV and you're doing sex, make sure you're undetectable. So and, it's it's not like if I were to get diagnosed, I don't have to tell anybody I'm, I can sleep with somebody or they don't have to say it once they have gone through the proper like medication already. Pwede ka makipag-sex with someone else na hindi ka magdi-disclose. Yeah. Pero make sure na safe ka at safe din yung makaka-sex mo. Or make sure undetectable ka. As person living with HIV, if you are uh, inserter, better to mag-switch role ka. Kasi mas low risk if you are the receiver. Okay. <laughs> For example, I'm I'm person living with HIV. Well, I'm, I'm I have HIV, so kailangan ko mag-switch role into receiver. But that's something you don't like. Yeah. Yeah. So you just like take yeah. it. That's why inaalagaan ko yung sarili ko para mapanatili ko undetectable ako. Even I'm doing uh, inserter to my partner, mananatili siya non-reactive or negative because I'm undetectable. It was so fascinating to hear Kuya Louis speak about you know, like his journey to when the first he encountered uh, getting diagnosed with HIV and how Dario was one of his many motivations to become the person he is today. A person who's an advocate, a counselor, and a case manager for people with HIV. So now you gotta wait for the next episode. And maybe if you're watching this episode later, I'm gonna link it down below here already. And you can watch the second part so you can see what his life is like now. Because some of the, you know, person living with HIV, takot and yung fear nila na magmahal, yung takot, may tatanggap ba sa kanila na may magmamahal ba sa kanila kasi may HIV sila. That's why me and my partner are the face of zero discord that relationship right now.